hey guys so i am back at the vlog game um i know it's been a while and i'm so incredibly sorry i made this 40 minute video for you guys i'm gonna try to edit it so it's not that long um if you think it's too long watch it four times a day 10 minutes you know cut that up I don't know what you want me to say. 40 minutes is a long time, but here's what you missed on Glee. Hey guys, welcome back. So it has been about two months since I last made a vlog and I am so sorry to those that have missed me and missed my updates and I hope no one was too scared that I was gone for so long um no but in all seriousness um these past two months have been like a roller coaster I watched my last vlog and all I was thinking about while watching it is like who is she like I just feel like I was so much more like happier and like enthusiastic and it's just so crazy that looking back two months ago just seeing like the drastic difference and how i'm feeling how my body's feeling and just due to what's been going on lately with everything um I, i'm so envious of how i was feeling before because it has not been fun these past two months um so a lot's been going on i literally feel like i dedicate a good like a minute in every video to saying sorry that i am not consistent with my videos i am so sorry i wish i was it's just one thing happens and then i'm like oh i don't want to vlog and then i'm like wait that's the reason of these vlogs to tell people for people to like relate or to mm, i don't know just to inform people just I'm very sorry. Um, I know that I need to be doing better with my vlogs. Don't worry, I know that. Um, well, I guess let's just start from where I left off. I left off feeling great, thriving, adventuring, traveling to West Palm and the Keys. <laughs> but seriously, I was having so much fun and I was so energetic and I had all like the stamina i guess to like just do all these things and just lately I, i've been so fatigued um okay so after that i wound up getting shingles so i don't know if you guys know what that is um i'm gonna put some pictures up here of it on me so don't be mean i know they're gross um, yeah, that was rough, okay? So, it started out, like, hmm, I'm gonna attach pictures, but I forgot where it started, but it was all just on my arm, and I still feel, like, a little bit of, you can't really see it too much, but I still feel a little of, like, the rash or something that it was. Um, it started out small, and it wound up just spreading around my whole arm, and I guess it's, like, a form of chicken pox for older people i don't know my immune system is low so i got it lucky me um it's horrible okay the pain is nerve pain which it's sensitive to like i i would go like this to it and it would burn i would feel it like inside of my skin and oh my god it was so terrible the pain was so excruciating and then it was itchy after a while and I couldn't even scrunch it. Oh god, it was terrible. So I wound up taking these, um, I asked my doctor for some like pain meds for it and I, they gave it to me, it, which is, uh, it's nerve pain medication. It's not just an ordinary pain medication and it's also used to treat depression. So, as I was taking these pain pills, I, it, my mind, I, I just started getting so foggy and I started getting so depressed. I felt like I had a black cloud over my head and I 
would call my parents like just crying. I was in Fort Myers and I would just call my parents crying my eyes out. I felt so foggy and so hazy and it was so terrible. I would rather bear the excruciating nerve pain that I was in rather than this depression. I mean, it was literally like a wave of depression just flew over me and I'm not on any antidepress well I guess obviously I'm I wasn't or I'm not on any antidepressants or just any mood stabilizers or anything so just I guess being put on one made me so depressed and I was so scared because I have been trying to keep my like mental health I mean I know how important mental health is and I've been trying to just like with given the situation I'm in like I don't know it just just trying to stay strong and da 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 and then these pain medicine this pain medicine just made me go crazy so I started getting so anxious and I was just so depressed and that was really scary for me um but after a while um with the the right I think they were antivirals or antibiotics the shingles wound up going away so whew, thank god like I said I mean you can't see them like I said I just like I I don't know maybe it's just because it's my body and I'm like feeling it all day but like I feel it a little bit but it, it's gone thank god because <sighs> terrible so I had that going on and then after that uh, so I've just been having like routine cat scans I've still been doing chemo pills um my scans have been going well um the pills seem to be doing their job. So my doctor um, asked me if I was interested in doing a new, I don't know if I'd call it a new form of treatment, but a new treatment um, procedure, um, which is called an embolization. So what that is, is they go into my body intravenously. So like you could, they could do it either through the groin or through like my wrist. So I chose to do it through here. So um, you could kind of see it. They went in through there and then they went, they put like a thing in and they under, in my vein, they went all the way in and they went like through my body and da 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 da. And they wound up going into my liver, which 90% uh, of my tumors are in my liver. And um, she went in and, and I was awake during all of this okay we'll talk about that in a second but so they go in and then they zap um they don't zap they put beads in that cuts off the blood supply to the tumors that are feeding the tumors so i was like hmm like this sounds interesting like let's give it a whirl so um i agreed to do it i saw the doctor she informed me about it so she asked me, she was like, do you want to be asleep or awake during this? And I asked her, I was like, uh, so it's like a inpatient procedure. So I asked like, honestly, the quickest thing to get me out of the hospital. Like I, I hate staying overnight in the hospital. So I was just like, if I'm asleep, do I have to stay? And she was like, maybe there could be a little more recovery time, um, depending on when you wake up. And I was like, mm, you know what? Just I'll stay awake. I'll try it. And my dad kind of pushed me to staying awake because he didn't want to sleep in the hospital. But yeah, um, that was quite an experience. So I did this embolization about one month ago, probably a little over a month ago. And um, wow, it was intense. Let me remind you, I was awake during this. So just, I, and I was on, I just remember they took me back to the room and I always get like super like emotional like when I'm in the hospital I mean I'm emotional all the time but like I just get like scared especially I don't know I, mean, I don't know so like even like I've had endoscopies before and I'll as before they give me like the anesthesia or whatever I'll just start like crying and I don't know I I, I, I don't know Ew, it's scary so um I remember I was just laying there and they were just asking me and I was by myself I like pleaded I was like can my sister come in please she could hold my other hand like because they had to strap me still like this I wasn't able to move my arm for like the duration of the procedure I don't remember how long it was but I was like can my sister hold my other hand I'm so so scared and they were like no sorry like it's a sterile environment da 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 
okay, I get it, but damn. So yeah, they sent me back and they're asking me so many questions and I just, I guess just getting overwhelmed I, and just thinking about it. And so yeah, so they started giving me all these like um, pain meds and like I asked for, I was like, can I have like Ativan, like Benadryl, like I'm just like not feeling okay. I was really nauseous and I was just nervous. And then after like all these like medications hit me because it was through IV, I remember just laying there and I felt like I was like floating, like levitating. It was so weird. I was just laying there and I was just like, and then they, then like, it was like silent. And then I was like overthinking everything. And I was like, should I be talking right now? Like, I don't even know if I was saying this stuff out loud, to be honest. I was so messed up on all these medical legal drugs so it was just it was crazy and I just remember they would ask me questions and I was just like eh. like I don't know I was so drugged up but um anyway so after a while it started really hurting here so I uh I wound up like saying like oh my god oh, oh, it hurts because like she told me that the doctor told me like let me know once it starts hurting like we'll start like retracting whatever so it wound up hurting a lot so I was like oh it hurts it like just hit me and then she was like okay like let's get out and then um procedure ended and yeah again it was awake and there's a large television like like I, I was laying back like this and then on this side where I was like looking there was a large tv of the pr like the process of what they were doing and I was looking and like it's a microscope that goes in so I was looking at it and I was looking at inside the insides of my body as this is going on I'm awake can you freaking imagine that I was I'm just like picturing looking at it I remember I saw my sur from previous surgeries I've seen I saw my surgical clips I just saw all these things and I was like that's me like, this isn't Grey's Anatomy. This isn't, uh, like, oh, it's just New Amsterdam, anything. Like, that's me. Like, oh, crazy. So, yeah, so I did that procedure. And um, then, um, fast forward, she said she was only able to get, like, half the liver because I, like, kind of kicked her out of my body. I was in um, back pain, like, a couple weeks before this embolization. So I requested my scans done earlier than usual just because I was worried um I've been really anxious lately like these past couple of months so I was just like worried any like pain I'm in I'm like oh my god like it's happening and that's like just not the way that I should be feeling but um so yeah so I requested my cat scans earlier so then I had them and then they wound up seeing the progress from the embolization or just like to see how it worked out and it was really good i mean it was incredible um the my chemo pills are still working towards shrinking my um tumors and or keeping them stable which is just equally as important um no growth is great news okay um so if they're stable that's fine with me um but yeah, so it was, I was really happy and I was happy to hear like a lot of dead tumors in my liver. Um, so yeah, so it was great news. I was happy then um, the radi, what do I call, the radiologist doctor, I guess I'll call, it. she, it's, so it's interventional radiology. So she's my IR doctor. So if I say my IR doctor, that's who it is. So my IR doctor, she called me about the scans and she was so ecstatic about the news. Um, so she was like, okay, so we're gonna go in in a little bit over a month and we're going to get the other side of the liver. And I was like, okay. Um, so one month later and my procedure's on this Friday. Woo! Okay. Oh, my dog thought I was calling her. Coco Chanel. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, so the tough thing about that is um, the recovery from that was pretty tough. Um, I was just in a lot of pain in my body. Um, so I was taking narcotics, which I, what I was prescribed. And I dislike so much how narcotics make me, are, are they called narcotics? Opioids? 
I don't know what they're called. Oxycontin. That's what I was taking. And I hate how that makes me feel. Honestly, I don't know. Controversial, but I don't know how people are addicted to those because they make me feel terrible. I'm in pain. Like, I actually need this and it makes me feel awful. I don't know how people, by choice, take the pill. Like, I don't know. It's weird. I don't get any kind of high. I get lows with it and it comes with a lot. Very TMI. I get constipated. I feel so fatigued. I'm so blah. Everything. It's just not good. Um, I was in so much pain. So I like felt the need like I had to take something and um, like and I thought Advil, you know, just wouldn't cut it. Like it was like a heavy pain. It wasn't just like, oh, I have a stomach ache or oh, I have a migraine. It was like, oh my God, my liver is on fire or like, oh my God, my muscles have been so sore and I don't know. Um, like I said, I've been really anxious lately. I've been really stressed and overwhelmed. Um, I got that like wave of depression. Uh, so really just these past two months, I just like haven't been feeling myself like the, like the Gabriella that was on the, my last vlog, like, that's why I say, like, I wish I was feeling like that. Like, I I don't know. It's pretty crappy. I have, like, no desire, really, to, like, go out and, like, socialize. I just really want to, like, stay home and, like, do nothing. I just, I just really don't like it. I don't like how it makes me feel. And, like I said, I've been super blah lately. Um, but it's just also influenced by so much stress that I feel like I'm going through. I just, I've been getting so scared, like at the drop of a hat, I'm just like, oh my God, like anything could happen. And it's just like, I hate feeling like stressed. <sighs> Don't cry. I hate feeling overwhelmed. And it's just like, I constantly, I hope I don't cry. I told myself I wouldn't cry in this video. I constantly am like just thinking about oh my god like what if this happens or what if this happens and it's just scary all the time I'm just like I feel like I'm just scared and I feel like I'm just overwhelmed and then I'm just thinking oh my god when is this gonna be done when can I stop feeling scared and overwhelmed and then I just think I don't know because the treatment goes on until I don't even know. I don't even know when I'll ever be done or if I'll ever be done with treatment. I don't know if this is a lifetime thing. I don't know if this is a two year max thing, a three year, four year thing. And it's just so unfortunate. Um, after my embolization, I started having like really bad like muscle pain. Maybe it's just because I wasn't like getting out there. So I started taking, um, I told my doctor about it and she gave me like muscle relaxers and um so I want to okay well I guess before this so I tr so I'm I, feel, I can't even get into the story without another one um I applied to FAU and which is Florida Atlantic University which is in Boca Raton um Living in Fort Myers was like too difficult for me, just doing like the traveling back and forth, really being apart from my family um, was hard because this is the time that I really need them the most um, in aspects of, you know, emotionally and like physically, like I, it's hard for me to take care of myself um, on my own. I mean, I can, but like if I'm feeling down all day, like what, whatever, like if I need to eat, how am I going to eat if I'm, I can't even get out of bed, you know? So I moved back home and, um, which is in Fort Lauderdale, applied to FAU. I got in, I was so excited. I applied for my orientation, so excited. I was like, okay, this is it, a new beginning. I'm so excited. And then fast forward to my doctor prescribing the muscle relaxers. I took, I got them prescribed. I went to CVS to pick them up. I took one at, 5 p.m. and it says like take one every I think it says take one every eight hours I took it at 5 p.m. and probably like two hours later I was like a zombie I was like like my mom like cooked for um my sister and I and I couldn't even eat I I just wanted to go to bed I was just like falling asleep at the table 
my mom said, and sister said I wasn't even making sense with the words I was saying. Like, it was just like, blah, 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 blah. I don't know. Um, it was Monday, so The Bachelorette was on. Huge Bachelorette girl. I didn't even want to watch it. Like, okay, that's when we know something seriously wrong. I was just like, I need to go to bed. Like, I don't want to watch it. So, um, they forced me to stay up and watch it. I really don't even remember too much what happened in that episode. This was probably two or three episodes ago. Probably two. Um, but, so I went up going to bed and I was hoping, okay, let me just wake up and I'll feel better. And I'll go to my orientation. It was at 8 a.m. So I was, just, I was so ready. And, I, you know, school isn't my number one priority at all. My health is. I just want my life to be as normal as it can be. I just want to, like be able to pursue little things and get I just want to get my degree I should have gotten it like three or four years ago I just want it now I just want to have it so once I'm done with all this bs I could have my bs my bachelor's in science I guess I don't know um but yeah and I, it's just so I could like get to work and you know I'm turning 23 this year I'm not getting any younger but so just thinking about all this, yeah, so then I took the pill at five and I woke up and my mom like came in, she's like, hurry, like you gotta get up. And I told my mom, I was like, I am so tired. I, I can't even move from this bed. Like I'm not going, I can't go. And she was like, you know how important this is? And I was like, I, I, I just, I couldn't go. I couldn't get up, up, up out of bed. The whole day I stayed in bed, wasn't on my phone wasn't watching tv i had no energy to even look at my phone i had no energy to open my eyes and watch a show and like connect and like comprehend things from a show like it's just it's just like one thing bad happens and then it's like five more thing that what i can't even speak now one bad thing happens and it's i feel like sometimes just like five more bad things happen and it's just like Sometimes, like, can I get, like, a win? Like, can something good happen? Like, it's just stressful because I really try to stay positive and I try to just keep a happy face on through everything, but it's really hard sometimes, again, when it's just, like, when is it going to be over and when... <laughs> Can I just go back to feeling normal again? When can I go up a flight of stairs without dying and gasping for air? When can I just be able to take a one class a semester and be able to attend every single class and excel in it? Not even freaking excel. I'll be okay with doing mediocre, but just to attend every class, to have that flexibility of a schedule, I want to work so bad. I would do anything to have a job. I have like, uh, it's just, you really don't know what you have until it's gone. And lately I just feel like everything has just been like ripped from me and I've just been very sad girl about it and just upset and with the world and yeah. So it's been tough. Um, and then on top of all of these wonderful emotions going on lately and wonderful thoughts, um, I was thinking, okay, you know, maybe like, cause I, I know I've been like a bit more emotional than usual and, um, I haven't had my period in two years. Um, I've been getting like shots to suppress my period um, because before the chemo that I was on, um, I don't know how to explain this without being too graphic, but basically my platelets were low, which means it didn't naturally like clot the blood. So again, I don't know how to say this without being TMI. Um, my periods were like a waterfall so it, it was just like constant like I, I was just bleeding for like weeks and it, it wouldn't stop and it was not normal and 
I'm losing so much blood when I really needed to retain all this blood because I was doing harsh chemo. So yes, they suppressed my chemo, my periods. And then, um, since these chemo pills that I'm on now, like my counts don't drop too much. So I was able to stop taking those shots and to get my period. I haven't had the shot in over maybe like eight months and I haven't gotten my period yet, which I should have or just... Not that I should have, but, you know, it should have come back after three months because um, that's when the shot wears off and it didn't. So I decided, let me just make an appointment with a gynecologist, um, see if they could check my levels, um, tell me, maybe put me on birth control. I don't know, just anything. And uh, so I did that. Um, I didn't go through. So I'm being treated at the University of Miami. Don't know why I didn't just ask them for a gynecologist. I decided let me go through with my insurance and see what kind of gynecologist is nearby me. So I went to this one lady. Okay. Um, so she, I'm not even going to say my impression of her until after the story. So I have my appointment waited three hours to go see her um just be called to the back have my vitals checked and then sent back out to the waiting room waited 30 more minutes for her to send me back i was about to walk out i was so pissed and then um and then she wound up seeing me she did uh like the annual test first she was talking a mile a million miles a minute she was freaking me out, um, asking me all these questions because she, she was like, oh my God, cancer. She's not a cancer gynecologist, just a regular Joe Schmo gynecologist. Um, she's freaking out. Oh my God, leomyosarcoma, you have it in the uterine, right? Oh my God, your bladder must be busted. Da, 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 da. Your ovaries and this and that. I was like, actually, I don't have uterine leomyosarcoma. I just have it like of the abdomen I guess that's where it started and it's stage four but it's never it's not in my uterus because they have uterine LMS and they have I think it's called retro pain out whatever I don't know which is just throughout your body so oh so she's freaking me out are you premature are you this are you that uh what water did you drink where did you grow up all these questions and I was like am I at a oncologist that I didn't know about like why are you, give me birth control and like let me leave like oh I was just I was getting scared my heart was like racing and she was give, making me so anxious whatever and we go to the waiting or to the exam room she does her exam and then um she wanted to do like a ultrasound on me to like check I don't know why I guess she was intrigued she wanted to see if she could see my tumors, actually. So she starts to go in my... So she starts to, like, look around in, like, my stomach. Um, and then I remember she made this comment, and it was so strange. She said... So she's looking for, like, my liver, my this and that. And then she was like... I think she said my pancreas. Oh, I know where... She said, I know where the pancreas is. My mother died of pancreatic cancer. I was like... Of course, I'm so sorry, but why are you telling me? Are you supposed to be calming me down? Are you supposed to be bonding with me? Because that's not really something I necessarily would love to hear right now while I'm panicking at the doctor's office. Um, but thank you for the useless information, so to say. It's not like we were getting along. Um, and then she looks at my bladder on the ultrasound and she says oh you got a tumor here you knew that right and I was like uh no I have no tumors there they're just in my liver and in my pelvis nope you got one right here you see they're like four leg fingers da 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 and I was like what and she's showing me the scan she's showing me the machine like I know how to read it like I went to school to read these machines and I was like, um, like, I really don't, I, I don't know what that is. I don't think I do. She's freaking me out. I'm telling you, you have a tumor and I'm so sorry to be the one to tell you. She prints out the picture and she even writes tumor in bladder. 
And she says, you got to go get a scan like ASAP, sweetie, because I'm really worried for you. And then she says, go to the bathroom, try to empty your bladder because it's full as hell. And I was like, so I go to the bathroom, tried to go. I didn't even really have to go. I was confused. And I go to the bathroom and I start crying. And I'm like, one thing after another, after another, are you kidding me? So she's freaking me out and then I call my doctor and then I put my doctor on the phone with her. Turns out, well, this went over 40 minutes because she was seeing other patients while waiting for me. And then I put my doctor on the phone and she talked to her and I have a fluid sac in my bladder. So it was that, it wasn't a tumor. And she said, oh, thank God, sweetie, you got lucky today. I didn't even know what to say. I was like, I got in my car, cried the whole ride home, pissed off, okay? This was probably about a week ago. Um, and then, yeah, so my video is getting kind of long, so I'm going to try to wrap this up. Um, I, that, that was about a week ago. And then today, Monday, I have, um, I had my CAT scan done because I have my embolization done. I have my embolization to do on Friday. So they, um, she wanted to have a picture of it before just to know like what, how everything's looking and to go in and da da da. And um, I was like, okay. I throw up like 99% of the times every time I get a CAT scan because the contrast that they do through IV, it always makes me throw up. Today I didn't. So I was so happy. I was having a great day. I mean, I throw up every time, literally. And I get these scans like once, twice a month or once a month or once every other month. They're, it's pretty often. I mean, I throw up every time all over, basically all over myself. And I have to stand still or lay still during these tests. So it's pretty difficult. So um, that was a definite big win for me today. Okay, and then um, I had to get my blood work done for a... Uh, cross and screen I don't know because with this embolization that I'm doing on Friday I decided to be put asleep for it um I didn't want to deal with the pain and I wanted her to just zap 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 away with everything that she could do without me having to like need her to get out and stop um so um other than all these major stress factors in my life um I like I said I really haven't been doing too much I don't have the energy to do anything I I don't have like the the drive really um to put myself out there and socialize like I really have just been staying at home and I really hope that my what's it called my energy comes back um because I miss having fun and being fun yeah um thank you guys so much for watching this video i'm so sorry that you had to deal with my wave of emotions but that's why you love me right um yeah so i really i said i shouldn't even say this that i'm gonna try to be consistent and this and that because who knows maybe if i don't say it, it'll actually happen but really i'm serious i'm i have my embolization on friday so i'm gonna try to vlog maybe um but i will come back with an update even if i look like poop and i'm not wearing my makeup um i will come out with an update and i will let you guys know how i'm doing and i appreciate you guys following along on my journey and you guys really mean a lot to me and i love your constant support the comments I mean, I get messages from people on social media just saying that they've came, they've come across my vlogs. It's just, I love it. It makes me really happy to know that people are watching and people are touched by what I say or they could relate um, or just, I don't know, maybe my situation makes, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just... Peace and out, guys. Okie doke.